Hey everybody, it's Ed, the curator of the Insomniac Drive-In. Welcome back to another edition of my DVD uh, Blu-ray collection as we continue to go through them and I get a little more used to doing these vlogs and uh, just kind of give you a little bit of a feel for what kind of uh, horror movies and sci-fi and basically any other kind of movies that I watch uh, so you can get a feeling of what we're going to be kind of covering on this channel once we really get going. So uh, we're looking forward to, to getting going. So I got another stack of movies. Let me just see if I can slide over here for a second. All right. Yeah. Yeah, tonight's stack. Uh, we're going to put them right there, and that'll be a little easier to go through. So let's see what we got. I hope you enjoyed the last one. I'm having fun going through these and kind of saying, oh, yeah, I wanted to watch that one and um, go from there. So first up, I have my reading glasses this time, too, so it should be a little bit easier. We have, we're going to finish the numbers tonight. We have 28 Days Later, which uh, was a great, uh, not a zombie film. I don't want to call it a zombie film because it's more of a rage infection film. Uh, and they run really, really fast in this. So I don't like to call this a zombie film. I love this film, though. It is such uh, a very cool one, and uh, I enjoyed that one a lot. And of course, I have the sequel, which is 28 Weeks. Is it 28? Yeah, 28 Weeks Later. This one is just not as good as the first one. It's good, but um, I like the feel of the first movie a lot more. Uh, the the uh, his name is escaping me. The guy who played the Scarecrow in the Batman Begins film uh, really does a, a nice job in the first one. Next up, we have Josh Hartnick and Melissa George in Thirty Days of Night, which is of course the adaptation of the um, graphic novel comic book series. And this is a fun movie. I love the effects of the vampires in this. Um, and it's just a great concept. The 30 days of night, Alaska is just always, uh, they, they have that huge amount of time when there's no sun. Perfect time for vampires to kind of slip in there and do their thing. So that's a fun one. Uh, Rob Zombies 31. I wanted to like this. I really did. Uh, I'm a big fan of a lot of his movies. I uh, love his his take on Halloween, the first film. Um, House of a Thousand Corpses is a great film. I love Lords of Salem. I didn't uh, I didn't really like this one as much. I lost interest in it. I found myself checking my internet uh, while I was watching it and stuff more than I did with any other films that I would usually be watching. So. Uh, I have it in my collection. It is because it is a good Rob Zombie film, but uh, not one of my favorites. We had a uh, comedy, 40 Year Old Virgin. I love this film. It is so funny. Steve Carell and Seth Rogen, uh, they're just so good in this. Uh, I, there's so many um, quotes in this that my wife and I do still. And if you really want a good laugh, you should check out this film. I'm a big, I'm going to do these two together because I'm a big cartoon fan. Uh, I, I love the old stuff from like the early 80s back. That's when I was a kid. And um, even going back further to like when my parents were kids and stuff. So I have these two sets. One is a hundred clump. Um, 100 cartoon classics and then 150 cartoon classics. And believe it or not, I don't think they kind of overlap, so it's really a big um, a big collection of stuff. You got Mighty Mouse and the old Max Flesher Superman, uh, some very early Woody Woodpecker and Felix the Cat, some Looney Tunes that are uh, would not really fly over in today's market, uh, plus Popeye and Tom and Jerry. There's just a, a lot of good stuff on this one. This one's more of the same. You got Mighty Mouse. I mean, I was a huge Mighty Mouse fan. Underdog, too, but I don't have any underdog on this collection. My daughter absolutely loves Casper. I have showed her that, and she loves it. And then the, the cartoon stooges are always a fun, a fun ones to throw on. 1408. This was uh, one of my favorite Stephen King adaptions. I saw this at the drive-in. Uh, my wife and I went to the drive-in. We got a, a great one called the Jericho. It's still open. Uh, we haven't been there in probably two, two or, oh no, more than that, probably 
maybe five years. Um, love, we're hoping to get back this summer now that my daughter's old enough. Uh, we've been telling her about the drive-in. Uh, but anyway, we saw 1408 there in the drive-in, and it was just drizzling, and it was just enough to make it um, misty and atmospheric. atmospheric. Is that the word? Maybe. I don't know. But um, th it was the perfect weather to go see this kind of movie. So this is a, a good one to my collection. I'm a big, uh, I love big disaster flicks. Um, Roland Emmerich, 2012. This was a really, uh, I, I liked this one a lot. I think this is one of the better end of the de end of days one. Uh, with the, it had a good cast and I uh, obviously when the oh, I'm sorry I, I haven't slept that great I'm sorry but uh, this is a good <laughs> this is a good one uh, especially uh, when uh, the plane's going through and LA is just kind of getting destroyed uh, it's a it's a good good one right there the next one I'm going to show you is probably one of my I would easily put it in my top ten movies of any genre it's just it's been one of my favorites since I was a kid it is Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein um, I used to watch this uh, it used to be on a lot when I was a kid WPIX out of uh, New York City they used to do a great Sunday morning lineup of um, Little Rascals cartoons Three Stooges shorts and then they would end their Sunday block of programming with an Abbott and Costello movie and a lot of times it was one of the Abbott and Costello meets, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or the Invisible Man. And they were good. The Mummy, that's a that's a good one. Um, this one, though, was, is my absolute favorite. I love it because Bela Lugosi's back as Dracula. Glenn Strange does a great job as the monster. And Lon Chaney Jr., of course, is the Wolfman. And it's the lineup that you wanted when... Um, when Universal made a House of Frankenstein, House of Dracula, you wanted to see Bella as Dracula. No offense to John Carradine, but this was the lineup. These were the people you wanted to see playing the monsters. It was a shame that Boris Karloff, they couldn't convince him to put on the um, the, the Frankenstein monster costume one more. But this is just, I, I would give this to anybody who wants to get into monsters at all. I might start them here just because it's comedy and you got your you get to know the monsters a little and it's just a great jumping in point I think because from here you can go to any of the other Universal monster catalog movies. This is a I love Kung Fu movies I watched them when I was younger on USA Network on Kung Fu Theater and I kind of rediscovered them I don't know, maybe four or so years ago I started getting back into them. This is 19 movies uh, with Bruce Lee and Brandon Lee. A lot of these are the Bruce Lee um, post, his, his I, what is it, Bruce exploitation, where they have a lot of actors who look like Bruce Lee, and they end up making some movies. There's like a Fist of Fear, Touch of Death. I've watched that one. That one's really good. Bruce Lee Fights Back from the Grave, Blind Fist of Bruce. The Image of Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, We Miss You, uh, Edge of Fury, The Real Bruce Lee, Screaming Ninja, Bruce Lee, The Man, The Myth, Rage of the Master, Snake Crane Secret, Breathing Fire, The Fist of Bruce Lee, Chinese Hercules, which is a great one, uh, Laser Mission, which stars his son Brandon, uh, Kung Fu, The Punch of Death, Dragon Lee vs. The Five Brothers, The Tattoo Connection, and Kung Fu for Sale. This was a great, uh, a great set. And, you know, it's just your regular. They got as many movies as they can on a disc. So the resolution isn't the greatest on these movies, but they are a lot of fun to watch. And you need to have some kung fu in your in your collection. If you can't be Shaw Brothers, it might as well be some Bruce exploitation, right? We have an action-packed double feature with, uh, I, I have to say, one of these movies I have seen many times and the other one I have yet to watch. I have seen Race with the Devil a lot, and Dirty Mary, Crazy Larry, I have not had a chance to watch yet. Uh, it's got a great cast, though. Um, Peter Fonda is in is in uh, both of them, I believe. Yeah, Peter Fonda is in both of them. Race with the Devil is, uh, oh God, I watched it probably about seven or eight years ago. I was part of a, of a group when Yahoo was really big with their Yahoo groups. I was part of a group called 
the new horror of it all, and they had a secret cinema that they did every week where people would vote on a certain subject, and they would pick the movies, uh, and everybody would vote, and the winning, the movie that got the most votes was the one that everybody tried to watch on Saturday nights, and Race with the Devil was one of those movies, and I, I got it through Netflix back when, you know, you get, you'd get your discs through Netflix, and I was just blown away by this movie, uh, this, it was such action-packed and over-the-top, and you got them running across country in this RV trying to get away from this devil cult, and just everywhere they go, the cult is there, and they can't get away from them and here's a spoiler at the uh at the end when they 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 think they're safe and all of a sudden everything just lights up with fire around them and it's just like oh man they couldn't get away and it's just a great movie if you haven't seen it i'm sorry if i spoiled it for you but i just i love the ending and i love the movie and i think uh it it, it doesn't take away from the whole the whole uh, crux of the movie it's just a great 70s drive-in movie and uh, it's a great this is a, a good collection and I am going to watch the watch the other one that's on here another dark uh, I love 80s comedies and here's a dark one this one's called After Hours and I'm trying to remember the guy the cast is um, is great you have Rosanna Arquette in it and the the guy's name is Griffin Griffin Dunn and he's a good actor. I've seen him in a couple things from the 80s. And it's just, uh, he's trying to to get through the night. Uh, he's trying to, uh, I'm sorry, I'm reading here. Uh, I'll get better at this, guys. You just gotta, you gotta put up with me for a little while. Uh, he's just trying to, to, get, to get through this night. And he's trying to get a date, I think. That was the, the crux of it. And he's trying to get back to Roseanne Arquette. And um, her character doesn't make it through the whole movie. It's it's a it's tough for me to explain it. I'm having a trouble time, it, but it's a good one. It's a good one. Here's one that's I haven't watched yet, but based on the cast, I, I love post-apocalyptic movies, and this one's called Aftershock. And you got John Saxon, Russ Tamblin, and Christopher Mitchum. It's a great cast. Uh, they're, uh, he's a freedom fighter and a mysterious visitor join forces for battle that be mankind's last hope for a future. Ooh. Probably this might be the best part of it. I don't know. We'll, we'll let you know. Air Force One starring Harrison Ford. This was one of the first DVDs I got. Um, it was it, when I bought my DVD player. It came with a pack of movies and this was one of them. Uh, Harrison, Harrison Ford is great in this and Gary Oldman of course plays the bad guy and uh, a girl that I work with her daughter was actually one of the extras she was in the she's in the military and she got to be one of the extras when um, Harrison Ford is boarding the plane and they have the soldiers are all lined up in in front of the plane and I believe she was one of the extras in there so that's really a cool thing um, this is a good movie to have Next, I have Airheads with Brandon Fraser, Steve Buscemi, and Adam Sandler. This movie's hilarious. It's a, a, a early 90s. Was it 90s or are we still in the 80s? And it had to be in the 90s. Or are we in, even in the 2000s? Well, this says maybe 2001. No. Oh, no. Here we go. 1994. Yeah, I'm all over the place tonight. Um, I didn't think it was 2000s. It couldn't have been because Adam Sandler was still kind of young and Brandon Fraser was still, you know, making movies and uh this is a great story about a bunch of uh they're a rock band and they want their music played on the air so they take the rock, the radio station hostage and hilarity ensures ensues ensues i can't talk tonight but this is a this is a good video a good movie um a lot of funny stuff in it i remember seeing this in the theater when it first came out uh so that is airheads Another great comedy of the 70s, uh, you got to have in your collection, is Airplane. I love this film. It's so much fun. Leslie Nielsen, um, Lloyd Bridges, and everybody else in this movie just do a great bang-up job. It's so over the top, and, and you just laugh and laugh and laugh. And it's another one that my wife and I are always doing lines from. Uh, we have a lot of fun with it. And uh, the sequel is good, but... This is so much better. I wish they had made a third one, because Airplane 3, I think, would have been something uh, something to see. 
Next we have a Legend Series 20 movie classics, Alfred Hitchcock, The Legend Begins, and I'm not going to read all these because there's a lot on here, but there's a, a couple that I, I do want to make mention of uh, that are really good. Um, Jamaica Inn is probably, I, I saw that um, a few years ago, and it was one of the, it was probably the first movie I watched off this pack, and I was quite blown away. It's such an early um, Alfred Hitchcock film from 1933, 39, 1939, and uh, it's a girl, uh, the, these band of pirates, they have, um, uh, they're on an island, and they wait for the ships to get caught on the rocks with a, a fake lighthouse, if I'm rem remembering correctly, they, and then they plunder the ships, and they have did the, there's a place called the Jamaica Inn on the island, and it's just a it's a really good movie. And what else on here have I watched? See the the thing with these sets is the quality isn't always that good. Uh, I think I tried watching the Thirty Nine Steps because I know it's also a play, and I wanted to watch the movie hoping to see the play sometime. But the um, the copy of the, the play wasn't or the movie wasn't that good. But that's a, a decent set. There's a, there's some silent films on there. Uh, which I hadn't known that Alfred Hitchcock had done any silent ones until I had gotten that collection. We're almost done. I'm going to be done torturing you very soon. Next up, uh, we're, I'm bunching all of these ones together. These are all the Alien movies that I have. I got a lot of them. I'm missing, I think, I'm missing two right now. I put this with this, Prometheus. I'm going to say something that's going to be controversial because I know a lot of people didn't like this movie. But I love it. I really think it's... Uh, I love the visuals in it. I think it's stunning the way that uh, it, it unfolds. And I love that we don't get a lot of the alien, if that... I know it's in, it's in the franchise and people were upset that we didn't really delve too much into the aliens themselves. But I think it's, it's a great story that takes place in that universe. And I think... Uh, the 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 Prometheus the the ship itself is cool. Uh, I love. I just. I, I think it's a great flick. The special effects are really good. And the uh, I'm trying to remember the the star the stargazers. I guess they are. Their um, their story is very cool. And at the beginning of the movie, are you are they saying that these are the people that made the people on Earth? Who knows? But it's a uh, it's a good flick, and it's a it's a, it makes you think about a lot of stuff, and I like that sometimes. In my, that's, that's how science fiction should be. Horror movies, I don't think uh, you need to think too much unless it's a really deep Stanley Kubrick, like The Shining or something like that, or a deep another deep horror film. But I think sci-fi, I, I love the, the 50s stuff, but I do love a good sci-fi movie that makes you sit and think for a while. Next is the Alien Triple Pack, which has Alien, Aliens, and Alien 3 in it. And growing up, I loved Aliens, and Alien was second, and then, you know, Alien 3 is kind of the third one. It's grown on me a little bit over the years, but the first two um, were always my favorite in the ones. And i got to say, in recent years, Alien, I, I, I have to re renege on my... Um, my saying that Aliens was my favorite of the three, when uh, Alien has, the first one has become my favorite one. It's just so scary, and there's so much that you don't see, and I think that's where, what works better with the Alien uh, in, the, in the film, is that you don't get to see it, and it's all in the shadows, and there's so much that you hear, and then when you do see things, it's such a frightening experience, and the cast is wonderful. And it's just Ripley Scott made just a great movie, and I recommend uh, I recommend the box set to, to anybody. Next, we have Alien vs. Predator, which takes place uh, in the present time, pretty much. Which so that means it comes even before Prometheus in the timeline, and it doesn't really make sense anymore since Prometheus came out. So you kind of have to uh, just enjoy the movie for what it is. And I do enjoy this one. I think uh, the two of the, the, obviously, Dark Horse Comics did a lot with uh, the aliens and the Predators, and they, they did a lot of storylines of them together. So it was nice to finally see them in a film. 
and I like that this is in a a frosted out mining facility and it's so uh, it's so barren and it reminds me a lot of John Carpenter's The Thing where the, the setting of it anyway and I, I like this story I think it's very cool and I like when the, the monsters finally fight each other and I were just kind of stuck in the middle and there's some good special effects and you kind of learn why the aliens and the predators are, are going at each other this is a good film on the other hand, this is not such a good film. They they did really good with the first one, but I, uh, you know, I've watched this uh, once or twice, and I just I I don't like this one as much. I don't think there's much to the story, and I don't. Um, this this is good. The cover art is good, and kind of. Uh, I luckily.